Welcome to APA Style for EDUC 1301. My name is Jennifer Crispin, and I'm one of the librarians who's normally at the Aleaf Hayes location. You can see my learning web page and my email address on this slide. I will show them again later on at the end of this video. Today we are talking about citations and formatting in APA style. Before we go on, here's an example of what I will be talking about in this video. Let's say you're reading an article about a current issue in education, and you run across someone's last name in parentheses at the end of a sentence or paragraph. What does that mean? Let's look at examples in this article about character education in middle school. Take a second to scan this paragraph. Look for the names and years in parentheses. How many do you see? I count seven. Each of the names in parentheses shows that the author of this paper has paraphrased an idea from a different paper. At the end of the article, you will find a page titled References. When you find the names that are listed in the paper itself, you will find information about where the writer got the ideas. This article by Batistich is one of the articles paraphrased in my example earlier. Since the names are listed alphabetically, you would be able to scroll and find out more information about the other articles as well. This gives enough information that you could search the HCC databases to see if we have this article. In this screenshot, I'm pointing out a direct quotation. How can I tell this is a direct quotation? Did you notice additional information in the parentheses for the direct quotation versus the information that is in the parentheses for the paraphrased information? This is another screenshot of the same references list, just further down in the alphabet. Let's talk a little bit about APA style itself. APA stands for American Psychological Association. It's often used in general scientific writing, especially in areas related to psychology and social sciences. Using consistent styles and formatting, such as APA style, saves the time of the reader. But what is a citation, and what information do I need? A citation is the information the person reading your paper needs to be able to find your sources. What kind of information was in the citations I just showed you? When you quote or paraphrase an idea from a book, article, website, video, or some other source, it's important to tell your readers where you got the information. In APA style, you use a combination of in-text citations and a list of references at the end of the paper to tell readers where to find your sources. An in-text citation is usually some information in a parentheses at the end of the sentence or paragraph that will tell your reader where to find the full information of your source in the references list. A source or resource is another way to refer to articles, books, videos, websites, or other forms of information. A reference list is also called a bibliography or a works cited list. Usually, it will have information like an author's last name and page number, but how you write the citation depends on how you introduce the information and where you got it. Your process will go something like this. You'll start by quoting or paraphrasing the source. What is the difference between a quote and a paraphrase? With a quote, you are directly using someone else's words and you will have it inside quotation marks. A paraphrase is when you rewrite someone else's ideas in your own words, including summarizing or synthesizing the works of several other people. Then you will add an in-text citation. 
the in-text citation will be either a narrative citation or a parenthetical citation. I'll talk more about the differences between those two types of in-text citations later in this video. Then you will list the full citation for the source in your reference list at the end of the project or paper. What does this look like in practice? I'm sharing a quotation here with some important information missing. If this appeared in my paper, how would you know where to find the original source or even who said it? This quotation does show that it is a quotation, but it does not say who said it first or where they said it. This quotation needs an in-text citation. This parenthetical in-text citation shows that this quote came from the American Psychological Association website. This is what it would look like in my references list. The author is the organization American Psychological Association. The title of the source is written in sentence case. Sentence case means that the only words that are capitalized are the first word of the title, any proper nouns like people's names, and initialisms or acronyms. The name of the web page is APA style, so it is italicized. The URL is included. Note that the web page address does not end with punctuation. Now that you've seen some examples, what do you think is essential information? What do you need to know to find someone else's source? No matter what style you're using, a citation will usually include this information. Who, when, what, and where. Who wrote it? This can be a person, a group of people, or an organization like the Texas Education Agency. When was it published? What is it? What's the title of the article, website post, video, or photograph that you're trying to cite? Where can the reader find the source? This doesn't mean which library the reader can find the source in. Rather, it means if this was a chapter from a book, what book is it from? If it's an article from a journal, what journal is it? What do the references in your references list look like in APA? Let's look again at this citation we found earlier in that article about character education. Who wrote this? When was it published? What is it called? And where can I find it? This was written by V. A. Batistich. It was published in 2008. The article title is Voices, a Practitioner's Perspective, Character Education, Prevention, and Positive Youth Development. And it's published in the Journal of Research in Character Education, Volume 6, Issue 2, pages 81 to 90. Here's another reference from that same article we were looking at earlier. Do you see anything different about it? Who wrote this? When was it published? What is it called? And where can I find it? This article has something called a Digital Object Identifier, or DOI. This information lets you go to a specific website called doi.org to look up the article. If an item from our databases contains a DOI, APA 7 does not require you to give the name of the database in the reference. However, your instructor's preferences take priority here. If your instructor wants the name of the database, you must include it. Here's another reference from the article we were looking at earlier. Do you see anything different about it? Who wrote this? When was it published? What is it called? And where can I find it? This reference includes a URL, or web address, to a ProQuest database.
only include URLs or universal resource locators, web addresses, if your reader can access them. And here's one more reference from the article we were looking at. This reference also includes a URL to a publicly available website. Again, who wrote it? When was it published? What is it called? And where can I find it? You may have noticed that some of these references had italics. You use italics for book titles, journal titles, website titles, and other works that stand alone. Articles in journals and chapters in books are not italicized. How should you show the web addresses? Blue underlined clickable links are the preferred way to show links, especially if what you're writing is intended to be shared online. You can also choose to make links black with no underline. The important thing is to be consistent. For dates, you use the last updated date, or the date of publication, or n.d. If a date of publication or last updated date is not available, you do not use the copyright date from the footer or the last reviewed date. If those are the only dates available to you, use n.d. for the date. Reference lists are shown with hanging indents. And this is what that looks like. This allows the author's last name to be used as a kind of index so you can easily scan the list and see the names that are represented. If you need help creating hanging indents in Word or in PowerPoint, you can contact me. My contact information is at the beginning and end of this video. Now we'll talk a little bit more about the finer details of in-text citations and what they look like in APA. Again, in-text citations tell readers that the idea or quote is not your own, and they show readers where to find the full information in your reference list at the end of the paper or presentation. When you quote or paraphrase someone, you should include a credit in the paragraph to show readers where to find the full citation in your reference list. You can do this through either a parenthetical citation or a narrative citation. A parenthetical citation means the important information will appear in a set of parentheses at the end of the last sentence in which you quote or paraphrase the original source. The information is usually the first author's last name and the year of publication, so if you have that information, you're ready to go. Here's an example of parenthetical citations. The author's name and year of publication appear at the end of the quote or paraphrased sentence. The parenthetical citation is who and when, separated by a comma, in parentheses, at the end of the sentence in which they were quoted or paraphrased. You can also incorporate your citation into the text by adding a signal phrase like the author's name in the sentence introducing the quote or paraphrase. This is called a narrative citation. If you're using a narrative citation, you'll follow the signal phrase with the year of publication in parentheses. In this example, Tapper, 2007, indicated that character education implementation in middle school had a profound impact on students' behavior and school climate, the author is paraphrasing Tapper's article from 2007. Notice that the author begins with Tapper and then puts the year and then includes their paraphrase. Again, a narrative citation includes the signal phrase such as the author's last name, the date in parentheses after the name, and then the paraphrasing. 
Sometimes, though, the original source is missing an author's name or a date or both. What do you do then? You refer to the entry in the references list. If you use a title in the first spot, that title will be what you use for the parenthetical citation. If you used a description, like say for a photograph that doesn't have a known title or author, you will use that description in your parenthetical citation. We do have one shortcut that helps make this a little bit easier. HCC Library Databases give you suggested citations for items in the databases. A little later, I will show you an example of a suggested citation and some changes you might need to make before using a citation that's provided by a database or generator. Now let's practice creating your entry in the reference list. Here's the article we were looking at earlier as an example. Let's pretend we're quoting or paraphrasing something this author wrote. Think about some of the details about how to write an entry in a reference list. Do you remember that some items need to be in sentence case? Do you remember which items need to be in sentence case? Earlier, I said I would show an example of a citation provided by the database. This citation is copied from the HCC database where I found this article. Let's make sure it's correct. I see at least two things that need to be changed. I'll give you a second to look at them. The first is that the title of the article needs to be written in sentence case. And the second is that this needs to have a hanging indent. And this is the corrected reference list entry. There are other ways to get the information you need to make the citations. This article is from the ERIC database and includes all of the information you would need to make a citation. This front page gives you a lot of information, but there is one piece of information missing, which is the page range. Journals can have their page number on any corner of the page. It depends on their style and formatting. This journal has numbers on the top right of the page. To get the page range, go to the first and last page and copy the page range. In this article, the first page is page 49, and the last page is page 67. In the ERIC database, the summary page for the article also includes all of the information. Now we're going to practice a couple of different ways to do in-text citations. We're going to start with using a direct quote on a slide. Now remember, there's one piece of extra information you need for a direct quote if you have access to that information. Since this is a direct quote and a page number is available, you will add a page number to the in-text citation. Note also that this is a parenthetical citation. Here we have a paraphrase of that quotation with a narrative citation. So I have the author's name, the year, and then my paraphrase. Now, maybe I want to make a paraphrase and just have a parenthetical citation at the end. This is how I write that. And then we will take one more look at the reference as it appears on the reference list. Thank you so much for your attention. Again, my email address is on this slide as is my learning web page, where you can find information about contacting me through the library chat or making an appointment for a reference interview. Thank you so much for joining me.